What's going on everyone? Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to start taking a look at some new features coming out in the next version of Stimulus Reflex, which is 3.3.0. And it's got some really cool stuff in it that I think has the potential to be game changing. So if you're not familiar with what Stimulus Reflex is, we've been using it to add reactive style features to our apps. So essentially, just here on the page, we can change something and it's going to update a few different things on the screen and it's not doing it via JavaScript over, you know, a controller action and so on and so forth. It's just sending something over WebSockets to the server and then receiving back some HTML over the WebSockets. By default, what happens is Stimulus Reflex re-renders the page that you're currently on and sends that HTML back over the WebSocket and then does a DOM diff. And on simple pages like this, it's really quick. So if we go look at the last request that came through, let me zoom out just a little bit. You can see all the HTML that was sent back. That's the entire page, essentially. You have this uh, selector body here showing up to show basically what to do the DOM diff against. And this is pretty cool. So we have a completed 200 OK in 18 milliseconds with the views taking 12.5 milliseconds. What you can do now that's kind of new, or it's totally new, in Stimulus Reflex with the new version, is instead of re-rendering the entire page, you can send back just specific pieces of the page, or you can send back nothing. And I'm going to show you today how you can use CSS selectors to essentially identify parts of the page that you want to swap, and then to render in Rails partials uh, as a replacement and do the DOM diff there at that level, which is much faster. Now on this app, it's not going to make it tremendously faster because the pages are pretty small. Actually, I should say this example, it won't be much faster because we could add a whole bunch of checklists and images and paragraphs to this note-taking app. Um, but in this example, it'll make a small difference, but we'll, we'll be able to see that, I think. Um, but anyway, let's get started and see how we can make this work. If you're new to the channel, my method is sort of to work through things um, live for the most part and try to work it out. So i got a rough idea of what I'm doing here, and um, we'll see where we end up. I will want to point out that this is actually like the 16th or 17th episode in this series. If you want to follow along and build this entire thing out from scratch, uh, all of this or most of it's on the YouTube channel. All of it's definitely over on our website, www.techmaker.tv. So if you want to follow along from scratch, you can do that there. But anyway, let's dive into some code. So... First thing we need to do is open up our gem file. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to update this to be stimulus reflex. And I don't actually want that. I want 3.3.0.pre2. So let's go back. Let's turn off the server here and then let's bundle. And we should see that switch from 3.2 to 3.3. Cool. So let's fire our server back up here. We shouldn't actually have to make a lot of changes as far as I understand it. So let's go back over to the server, refresh, I'm going to have to log in again. And um, let's go back over here. Okay, so we're good now. So let's pop back over to our code. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and open up the pages show and just remind myself and everyone else where we are. So basically we have this form stuff at the top, which is basically the buttons. We can edit the title or we link to the edit page or whatever. Then we're uh, rendering a bunch of elements. So there's different sorts of elements um, and you can check out one of the last episodes where we kind of broke this down into partials. But I've got this in a checklist partial here. And what I want to do is basically put an ID on this and I'm going to say ID equals uh, checklist. And then let's do checklist, checklist.id. Um, yell at me if you see me misspell anything. Uh, anyway, so now um, what we can do is go over to our, what is it, checklist item reflex. And here, what I'm going to do is just say, Morph. So again, if you haven't seen any of the, any of the previous stuff, this may be a little bit foreign. Um, so you have to check that out. But 
what I'm gonna do is just make a small modification here and instead of by default if this is not here this is gonna re-render that page or at least generate the HTML and send it back over the wire what I want to do is say just morph the element that changed so in this case this is a pretty big partial um, so we'll see how fast it actually gets but what we're gonna do is check list dash and then we'll do a checklist item dot checklist ID and then I'm just gonna put in some text for now and let's go see what this does so if we change one of these we quickly get it the whole thing swapping out for testing this out so let's go back and look at what happened so you can see here um, where are we at um, I'm assuming this is what it is, right? So we have the selector checklist two and the HTML is testing this out and then there's some stimulus reflex stuff. Um, and so that's a much smaller payload than what we were looking at earlier. Um, we don't really get any sort of standard clock stuff. Uh, so we don't, I don't exactly know what the timing on that was. And I'm not gonna go too deep into that here. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and make this work how we want. So instead of testing this out what I'm gonna do is say application application man I can't spell right now controller dot render I'm gonna split this up onto a couple of lines here and then I'm gonna give it a partial path and the path basically is just gonna be checklist checklist and I'm going to I need to specify the the local variables. So I'm going to say locals and then we'll say checklist item dot checklist because the checklist item belongs to the checklist. And we can go ahead and include this actually in the query here. So we can say includes uh, checklist. And let's try this now. Okay, so we can change this to complete. Oh, what happened? I think I broke something. Let's go look. Um, expecting, I have a curly brace missing somewhere. Ah, there we go. I missed a variable here. I need to specify the local variable. That got me surprised for a second. Okay, let's try that again. So it'll say complete, and then it's just working as it was before. Okay, so now let's go have a look at that and see if we can see how fast that's running. So this is actually a fairly big block of HTML that's being spit out. We can see right here we have this rendered checklist, checklist duration 4.8 milliseconds. Um, so you can imagine that's actually a lot faster actually if you're rendering less HTML, but that's still faster than re-rendering the whole page earlier. Now we're talking about very unnoticeable differences again like on this project um, right here, um, but I think earlier it was 12 and a half milliseconds to render the views and here it's 4.8 So you can imagine if you had a really complicated big view Going on and you were going to re-render the whole thing back. It might be a little bit laggy Whereas with this if you can render just a little snippet back, it's going to be much faster and and feel really seamless so I think that's really awesome. Um, you, this also works with view components, so I'm gonna do another episode right after this one in one of our other projects we've been working on where we do view components as an example. Um, but I think that's pretty much it for this episode. As always, if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. I'm trying to post content essentially every day. Um, it's been a little spotty lately. I've had some big projects going on, but we're doing the best we can and we're gonna get more consistent, so. Anyway, uh, also hit the like button. That helps us out a ton. And leave a comment if you got anything that you would like to say. All that said, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next episode.